I just bought a 3D printer. Can I make car parts with it? What's up guys, Shane here. Welcome back to Vehicle Garage. In this video, I'm doing something a little different, not directly related to any of my vehicle projects, but something else I got here to hopefully make some custom parts and maybe make a few repair items as well. So I'm a novice to 3D printing. I've never owned one before. This is my first machine. And before I got this one, I'd never seen one or used one. So I went ahead and got this because they're a great deal. This machine right here um, is one of the most common one of the most popular machines that you can get your hands on for getting started right now. So this is an Ender 3 Pro and I'm not going to go into a full depth review on this machine because there's a ton of stuff out there. There's a ton of tutorials out there from people that are far smarter than me on how you can set up and use a machine like this. But if you are interested and you want to order uh, an Ender 3 or an Ender 3 Pro like what I've got here, do me a favor and check down below in the description of this video. I've got links. Those are my affiliate links. So you know how that works. If you decide to order one, if you're going to order one anyway, please think about ordering it through my affiliate link. It supports the channel. It helps me out tremendously and you'll still get the same great deal that you would on Amazon. So anyway, that's down there. So I've had this machine for almost three weeks now. And before I attempted to make any parts of the car, anything else like that. I wanted to learn more about the machine and setting everything up and try to make sure that I get high quality, robust parts out of this when I do print things. So starting out, uh, like I said, I'm not going to go into full detail about everything start to finish with 3D printing or the printer itself. But one of the things that I learned early on here is that there are different materials in 3D printing. And if you're going to be printing car parts, you really need to pay attention. Most people start out with a material called PLA. That's, that's the most common one. It's the easiest to print with. So I've printed with PLA. That's what I got started with. So here on the table, you can see a few of the things that I've printed so far. In the back here is a vase, a tall vase that I printed. And this is in a marble PLA. You can't really tell a huge difference between the materials just sitting here. Everything feels like plastic because it is. However, when it comes to cars, we know that they sit out in the sun and sit in some heat. Anything that goes into a car, we need to make sure that it can withstand those temperatures, especially here in Florida like I am. It gets brutally hot in the car in the summer. So things like this PLA plastic unfortunately have a low melting point or low glass transition temperature to use the proper terminology. All that means is this damn thing will melt. If I go put this in the sun on the dashboard of the car and I come back in two hours it's going to be warped and depending on how hot it gets it could just be a flat pile of plastic at the end of it. So the filament material that I was shooting for after I learned to print a few things in PLA here is called PETG and it's another filament it comes in spools like you see on the top of the machine here again indistinguishable from PLA if you just look at a spool they look the same because they're the same diameter to work with this machines and it doesn't matter PLA PETG you can get them in all kinds of different colors and um, so you don't have to worry about that but with PETG, it's got a higher glass transition temperature, so it's more suitable for car parts. It's also, according to most of the research that I've done and the experts on the internet, the PETG is actually not quite as stiff as the PLA is, so it's not quite as strong if you look at it from that perspective. The difference being PETG is more flexible, so Again, I think that's going to be better for car parts. Anything that you lean on, put any weight on, or, or gets moved a lot, having that flex to it, I think, is going to be of a huge benefit. And again, if I print anything out of PLA, it's going to melt in the car, so that's not even a consideration. There's also ABS type materials. Um, that's the plastic that you're real familiar with. That's what most of your car plastic parts are made out of. They're injection molded rather than printed, of course, but 
ABS is ubiquitous in the automotive industry. So you can print an ABS plastic. Again, I haven't tried that, so not going into any details here. I, I believe it's more difficult. I know the recommendation is that you have an enclosure for your machine because ABS plastic will frequently warp. Now there's another one that's in the family or very similar to ABS called ASA. I haven't tried that yet either, but I've seen a few other people like Teaching Tech make car parts out of ASA. So that's another one I do plan to try in the future. But for now, I have a whole bunch of spools of PETG. One of the early things I tried here was a traffic cone because I got orange PETG. It came out pretty well. I had a layer shift here, which is not the best, but and all that means is as I was printing, something got knocked out of whack and everything shifted over, you know, 0 0.1, 0 0.2 millimeters. Not much, but just a tiny little bit. Still looks like a cone. So other than the size of the build plate area here, obviously if I'm gonna print something on this printer, it needs to fit in the area, in the buildable area of this printer. So basically, the build plate that you see here are the X and Y dimensions and Z dimensions. You get kind of an idea here. Obviously, I can't go all the way to the top, but uh, 220 by 220 by 250 millimeters. So that's the build volume that I have to work with for this machine as it sits right now. And you can upgrade that in the future if you want and make it bigger. But so as of right now, that's what I'm limited to. If you want to print something big, bigger, here's an example. This is the Elder Wand from Harry Potter. I made for my wife. And clearly this thing is bigger in every dimension than the build area of this printer. So this design, I got off Thingiverse, I didn't create this, I just printed it, is in two pieces. So from here up is one piece and here down is another piece. And then I glued them together. So each piece fit on the print surface. And then once it was done, I just assembled it and glued it together. So that's one way to make parts that are larger than your build surface. And again, this is in the marble PLA plastic because it's not meant to be out in the sun or in any high heat environments. So some of the first things that I printed were upgrades for the printer, things like this tensioner for the x-axis. I've got a camera mount here and there, there's some other little bits and pieces that I printed to improve the way that this prints. And, um, and that's what I started on. From there, I branched out into, I found some great organization things to print. So for the garage, I haven't hung any of these up yet, but one of the things that I found were these little hooks. And the cool thing about 3D printing is with this file, I could scale that up from almost as small as I want, but basically to as large as will fit on this build plate. So if I wanted a, a massive hook, I can make this, you know, probably at least double the size of, of what these are. But because these have been designed in CAD software, they're countersunk for the screws. You've got cutouts to get to the lower screw there to make it real easy to install them. And, uh, and that's really cool. So there's a lot more organizational things that I'm gonna make for the garage. These hooks are a couple of examples. This doesn't look very interesting, but this is a spool for an extension cable or any kind of wiring. So that's great too. If, you've got, if you're like me, you've got stuff all over the garage and it can always be better organized. So if I can roll the cable up on this, toss it in the bottom of the toolbox, that's awesome. Um, one of my favorite organizational things, and I've printed a whole bunch of these so far, are these little bins. And you can see here I've printed them in orange and green and red and white. Several of the colors that I have filament for right now. But you can see these little containers. They look just like most of the other little containers you might buy at the hardware store or Harbor Freight or wherever. Um, but I printed these myself. so. They stack and there's a couple different flavors. There's the, you've got the whole container or you've got a container that's split in half like this on the design that I downloaded. Also for a point of reference, again, all of the stuff that I've printed here, I've found on Thingiverse. So Thingiverse is a 
website where a lot of makers go and they'll post their STL files, which is the 3D object file that you start with. And you can download those and you can print those. And if you're going to get started in 3D printing, that's the best place to start. Because once again, I've not designed any of these items myself. This is all somebody else's hard work. I just printed it like the idiot that I am. The one thing that I have done with several of these things, going back to what I was talking about with these hooks, is change the scaling. So with those 3D objects, it's real easy to go into the software and make them bigger or smaller. Obviously, there are limits on how small you can get and still get detail. And like I said before, you can only go as big as your build area on your printer. I also recently redid my kitchen with repainting cabinets, adding some crown molding, changing out hardware. And all of my drawers had handles that were a non-standard size. So actually, the 3D printer was great for this. Rather than special ordering handles that were like $10 a piece from the store, I printed them out of black PLA plastic. This was the first roll that I got. And they came out great. Um, each one of them, I don't know the exact amount of material that was used off the top of my head, but I'm going to say that each handle that I printed cost me about 30 cents in, in material, maybe, probably not even that much, again, versus $10 each. So I haven't really saved money overall, but I'm going to consider that a savings. So instead of spending $60 on six new handles for my kitchen, I printed them spent maybe two dollars and they look great. If they break I can print another one and I can change the design or the color or you know whatever I want in the future. But that's another great application. So like I said the big thing for learning with car parts is making sure that you're using a material that can withstand the environment that you're going to put it in. And I have printed my first car part here. So if you've been watching this channel for a while now you've seen a few of my project vehicles. You've probably seen my Audi A4 in the background. That's my daily driver. It's looking pretty sad these days. There's a lot of stuff that's broken and wrong with it right now, I'm ashamed to say. But I haven't really done a full video on that. One of the things that broke on me recently was a little plastic part. This. So if you don't know what this is, this is the hood release handle up under the dash there. And a while back, I went to pull on this to pop the hood. I don't remember why. And this little sucker snapped off. So the little end of the cable that went right in there pulled out. The cable's still in the car. I can take a hammer or a pair of pliers and yank on the cable and still get the hood open as it sits right now. But I have to have something to pull on that with because the handle broke. So I went over to Thingiverse. And someone else had already gone through the trouble of creating a replacement part. And you can buy these. They're, they're really not that expensive. You can, I think it's like 18 bucks. You can get a cheap one of these aftermarket. Um, but again, I've got the 3D printer. The whole point was to try to make things myself if I can. And again, I think I used maybe 50 cents, 80 cents worth of material to print this. It took... I don't know, I think like three hours, four hours to print this, something like that. Um, and here you can see it. The original part versus the printed part. And you've even got the opportunity to customize things here, like the, the OE part is open on the back. The printed part is walled in, so underneath the outside skin of this, it actually is going to be somewhat similar to that with infill that has air pockets in it. It's not solid. But because it's got the outer skin on it, I think that might even make it stronger than the stock piece. But we'll find out when I install it in the car. So that's it for the first car part that I've printed here. So I'm definitely going to be using this printer a lot in the future. Make sure you stay tuned and check back because actually the main reason why I bought this printer in the first place was for my S10 Blazer, if you've watched the channel, that's my most well-documented project so far. And there are several parts in the Blazer that are broken. Big surprise. The issue is that nobody makes them anymore. So what are you going to do? I'm going to try to print them. The main part being the driver side door armrest or, or 
door pull, or both, whatever you want to call it, the top of the door panel that you lean on when you're in the car and that you pull the door closed with is broken on almost every single S10 and S10 Blazer out there. They discontinued them years ago. No one makes them anymore. And if you're fortunate enough to find a used one that's in good condition, it's probably the wrong color. At least that's been my experience. I've found a few of them here and there, but they always seem to either be red or blue and they're still not in perfect shape. And of course, I, if you've watched, I have the light gray interior color in that car and that's one of the more rare ones. So my goal is to design or redesign rather that plastic base for that armrest in CAD. So I'm gonna use Tinkercad, something real simple and free because I'm still new to designing parts. I haven't done that yet. And it's going to have to be a two part design because unfortunately it's too big to fit on the build plate in one piece. So if I split that into two halves, I should be able to fit that on here. But like I said, I'm gonna do a whole video about that process from start to finish. So check back for that in the future. Again, if you're interested in getting into 3D printing, either to make car parts or just as a hobby, please consider using my affiliate links down in the description and supporting this channel. Whether you wanna get an Ender 3 or an Ender 3 Pro like this one, I'll put some links down there to both versions of the machine, as well as some of the upgrades that I've added to this machine here, even though I didn't really get into those in this video. So if you've got any ideas on other things I can try to print, leave me a comment down below. Click that thumbs up and like this video if you did. Again, stay tuned for more. Click that red subscribe button down below. Click the notification bell to make sure you don't miss the next video in this series. So if you want to see more on my S10 Blazer, you can check out one of these videos here or here. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.